what I want to do is to think about how we can use nature and mimic it in an interesting way. And actually thinking about it in extreme ways, and I'll show you what it means to me to think about it in extreme ways. Biomimetics has two parts to it. First, you have to look to nature to find something amazing. That's an easy one, because everything amazing about nature. Then you have to uncover something interesting, how nature does it, and maybe then go to second part. A little bit difficult, but this is what it's all about, trying to mimic it. And to me, specifically, I try to mimic high-tech solutions that nature can give us. So can we reformulate natural materials, natural strategy, and create new materials and devices that outperform anything that we have today? So what I also want to say is that in other ways, it's pretty much stealing from nature, but it's really a rewarding experience. It's a rewarding business. And there would be a couple of papers that I published and discoveries that we made, and even for that, um, that's quite a number, and it's only those that made it to covers of journals. And why it's so rewarding is that nature has so many beautiful technological solutions, and they do not protect it with IP. You can just steal it, do anything with it. It's out there for grabs. And do this. Really, it's amazing. So just let's take a look at a couple of these. And the next one that I want to show you is something that is important to me because two parts, there are many others, that I try to look in biology, in nature, is its ability to create materials that are multifunctional. Material, we can't do it now these days. What nature does is the same material that can be very strong, designed for skeletal function, and also amazing optical properties, and amazing magnetic properties, fluidic properties in one material. And the other property is that often, if not always, in biological system, there is ability of materials to adapt to environment. So, just to give you one example of that, I brought it with me. It's one of the organisms that we study in my group. This is a deep sea sponge. This is actual sponge. It's not very spongy looking, but it's a real organism. It lives 1,000 meters deep in the ocean, no light, nothing. It builds this amazing skeleton out of glass. It's pure glass. It's such a beautiful glass. And in the bottom of this glass structure, there is pretty much perfect fiber optical array. Fiber optics, we were happy when we discovered fiber optics 50 years ago. This is about half a billion old strategy. Living somewhere deep in the ocean and having such a wonderful design. Look at this. You can take a look. Perfect design. One window crossed, another one is open. No mistakes, really similar to buildings that we built. By the way, this is a building. This is actually a building used by shrimp, actually almost in all cases, a pair of shrimp, male and female shrimp, living inside this house, using it for protection. And not only that, 1,000 meters deep in the ocean, why do you need fiber optics? There is no sun there. And living there, it's taking light from bioluminescent bacteria, so it shines as a beacon down there in the ocean. So these guys are not only protected from environment, they have enough food, everything comes to this beacon, and products of life cycle of these shrimp are used by sponge. Sponge doesn't need that much. So, interesting idea. It's optimized for mechanical properties. It has to be strong. It's optimized for fluidics to make exactly fluidics through the system and optical properties. Yet another one. Now we will go from deep waters in Pacific and we'll go to shallow waters of Caribbean. Too much sun. And here is the organism, which is very, uh, it's a brittle star. It's a cousin of starfish that everybody knows. And it's an interesting property that was described in biological literature as case of mimicry. The organism actually 
dark brown to black during the day, and it becomes whitish during the night. So what kind of biomimicry is that? It's kind of you want to be, if you want to mimic environment, you have to be white during the day and black during the night. So it's not that kind of biomimicry. What is actually happening is that this material, skeleton of the starfish, well, brittle star, not only skeleton, but it's coated with these excellent lenses, not only lenses, but there is pigment coming out to cover the lenses during the day, so that too much sun to protect it from sun, and then going back inside to open the lenses so th they can collect more um, into this system, so that to see, really see through their bones. And it's again optimized for strength, optimized for um, fluidics, and it's optimized for optics, in this case, lenses. Well, again, it's using strategy that we all use, or at least I do, when we use glasses that change their opacity during the, day, during the sunny day. So, again, they know how to do it. It's just a matter of knowing that nature has these high-tech solutions. Now, let's say um, I now want to do something with that. In fact, mimicking nature doesn't mean that I want to create a synthetic brittle star. I don't want to make synthetic sponge. What I want to do is to take this idea and maybe combine it with another idea from a completely different organism and to come up with something with material that may have multiple properties. And in particular, if we look at that, okay, this is skeleton, it's usually porous, it uses microfluidics, these fluids change everything possible and impossible. And let's say what we can do with that, for example, is thinking about new concept, the concept of wetting in color. In particular, we can take a um, structure that is actually uh, so this is a synthetic one, but it has exactly the same structure as synthetic as natural opals, or has the same structure as butterfly wings that have beautiful iridescent color. But we can use something else, and we think about fluidics that are now controlled in certain areas, but not others, and do something productive with that. In particular, what we can do, we can take a butterfly and make it just depending on environment and depending on the liquid you use, suddenly the blue color goes away and you see only U.S. Air Force appearing on the, on the um, butterfly. So it's kind of very important business of tattooing butterflies. But if you really want to do something different with that, you can hide messages in these bright materials that depending which decoder you use, which liquid you use, you can decode different messages. You can use it for encryption, you can use it for liquid detection, and it's absolute immediate response that you have. This is combination of skeletal structure with microfluidics with optical response. We can go further, we can think about other things, and in particular color. We are talking about disruptive ideas, disruptive coloration, something of that kind, is used a lot in nature, but in another interesting idea, as I said, is adaptive character. What if I want to create materials that change color? Or it was invisible and then visible again. What we can do, we can do that. We can have a surface where words appearing and disappearing, and they will do it in response to environment, and in this case, I mean, it could be temperature, it could be humidity, it could be a different stimulus that you use. Or, Valentine's Day is coming, and let's say you want to sell it flowers, or you, have, you think about a heart. This is a beating heart that responds to environment, it could respond to temperature or acidity, and if it responds to temperature, it would say, I'm hot, I'm cool, I'm hot, I'm cool. As temperature changes, it would beat. Or you can send flowers and think about clothes or material that you can use on your walls that can actually changes the color. Ideally, changes the color depending on your mood. We're not yet there, but it can change color depending on temperature, humidity, and other environmental stimuli. Or we can go further and think about how to grab things, how to release things, 
how to have things such nicely, grab particles and at will releasing them. Multiple things that can be done with that, but from that, yet another part of my first half, I can show you another um, example that would be thinking about purity, sacred purity of the lotus leaf, where we design the material that can withdraw itself from the surface so fast that the liquid doesn't stay in contact with the substrate. Such a way that it withdraws and leaves the substrate, leaving nothing behind, and it can do, do it down to minus 25 C, which means that the freezing rain drops on the surface, leaves the surface so fast that there would be no ice accumulation on the surface. The idea is really there. Now, something I consider really extreme. Extreme multifunctionality. Can we find a biological system that can do everything? In particular, can we use something that can solve all our sticky problems? And by sticky problems, I would say a whole range of things. It's contamination. And by contamination, I would say that it would uh, have windows, it would have um, solar panels, marine biofouling, or graffiti. By the way, if you look at this graffiti, it's signed with my initials, JA. I didn't do it, but that kind of a nice graffiti that I've chosen for this talk. Well, it could be airplanes, building, icing everywhere. That is a problem. Or we can go further and think about oil and the pipelines where there is oil transport problems. So infestation or medical problems where things, when they're sticky, we don't want them this way. So what we did then is we're looking again for some interesting biological inspiration. And the inspiration here is this pitcher plant. It's an organism that captures food. When it's happy, the stomach is full, doesn't care about these insects, and suddenly it's hungry. And it's usually when it's a wet day. Same insects. If now they step on this pitcher plant, they slide down into digestive juices of this organism and immediately consumed. So, without describing exactly what is uh, happening in this system, we really stole this idea and thought that it would be a wonderful idea for surfaces to which nothing sticks. We call them slips, slippery liquid infused porous surfaces. They're perfect. They're pressure stable, they're energy saving, they're repairable, they're foul resistant, they're cost effective, and they're transparent. Everything slips. And let me show a couple of movies of hmm, before that formulas. Not going to talk about it because I already see a lot of upset faces. Just to show <laughs> that actually it's real science, we think when we design. So, Let's begin with oil. Crude oil is a big problem. It sticks to everything, it's dirty, it's horrible. So if I now use the surfaces, the top part is our slips. The middle part is Teflon, which is considered to be non-sticky material. Look how sticky it is. And the bottom part, uh, part is a regular metal that is used in the transportation of oil, as if Oil doesn't even see the slip surface underneath, okay? Another interesting part of it is, in fact, that it's self-healing. We can cut it in pieces, and it self-heals in, actually, milliseconds. And what this movie is showing you. Yet another one, coming back to what nature is doing with this system, the plant, the pitcher plant, Okay, we, we caught an ant, we actually put a jam on it, so to attract it, neither jam nor ant can be attached to the surface. They slide off, and if we go further, contamination, I mentioned contamination to you, if I use general contaminants in the air, which would be carbon dust, so it can collect on the surface, and either it would be rain or just washing it, it immediately collects everything and leaves surface absolutely clean. Let's go further and think about ice. 
Okay, and I says, well, there are two movies playing at this moment. On the left, you see um, our trial to think about refrigeration. There is more about refrigeration today. So we're keeping the temperatures corresponding to refrigeration. The right part is the, our slip surface. Droplets slide over the surface while everything freezes except for the surface, because it's so slippery that it doesn't even have time to freeze on it. Or, if you actually have a piece of ice on it, it slides as everything else. If we go um, to medical parts, same thing. The top surface, as if it doesn't see blood. Blood coagulation doesn't happen. It sticks to Teflon, sticks to glass, and to finish, let me show you another movie of something that probably everybody gets upset about ketchup. And with the last uh, 30 seconds, actually, I will try to show you that. I wanted to show all of that to you, but safety inspection wouldn't let me bring hazardous elements, which would, or oil is flammable, blood, don't think about it, infestation, always a problem. So, kind of. Fine if I use wine, and we're all upset when we put wine on ourselves. So, now I have two things here. One surface is a regular one, the other one is slips. It's nothing. It doesn't feel as if anything is touching it. So, with that, I want to say that it's really great to do biomimetics. It gives us good ideas in technology, good ideas, interesting science, and in addition to that, in addition to good ideas, I certainly think, at least for me, it's a lot of fun. And um, thank you for your attention.